Shalom. Today we're going to look at two more letters and the word that they make and the cognates that are related to those words. You can still get a font chart from the link below. The two letters we're looking at today are Kaf and Lamed. Together they spell a word which is sometimes spelled with a kamatz and sometimes it's spelled with a cholem but it's always pronounced kol. It's never pronounced kal. It's always pronounced kol, regardless of the vowel. Now previously, we have talked about the Aleph and the Tav, which are the first and last letter of the Hebrew alphabet. Here we see that the Kaf and the Lamed are exactly the two middle letters of the alphabet. And I think that will show us something interesting in a similar vein, that everything is included in the two middle letters, not just the Aleph and the Tav includes everything, but the Kaf and the Lamed, Kol, is going to include everything. The most basic meaning for Kol is all or every or whole. Genesis 1, 21. And God created great whales and every living creature that moveth, which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind, and every winged fowl after his kind, and God saw that it was good. Genesis 1.26 And God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Genesis 2 6. But there went up a mist from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground. Exodus 12 16. And in the first day there shall be a holy convocation, and in the seventh day there shall be a holy convocation to you. No manner of work shall be done. Literally, it's written in Hebrew all work, kol, shall not be done. Save that which every man must eat, that only may be done of you. In another similar negative sense, Genesis eleven six, And Yehovah said, Behold, the people is one, and they have one language, and this they begin to do. Now nothing will be restrained from them. In literally in Hebrew, will not be restrained from them everything. So it's kol, but in English we're going to say nothing will be restrained from them. Nothing that they have imagined to do. Talking, of course, about Babel. To get the related verb, we add a he. We have a verb kala, which means to complete or finish. Genesis 2.1 Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them. Genesis 6.16 a window shalt thou make to the ark, and in a cubit shalt thou finish it above, and the door of the ark shalt thou set in the side thereof, with lower, second, and third stories shalt thou make it. Genesis 21.15 And the water was spent, it was finished, in the bottle, and she cast the child under one of the shrubs. Genesis 41.30 and there shall arise after them seven years of famine, and all the plenty shall be forgotten in the land of Egypt, and the famine shall consume the land. It's going to take over the whole land. Exodus 5.13 And the taskmasters hasted them, saying, Fulfill, complete, finish your works, your daily task, as when there was straw. Leviticus 19.9 and when you reap the harvest of your land, thou shalt not wholly, completely reap the corners of your field, neither shalt thou gather the gleanings of thy harvest. As a noun, these letters form a word, kala, which can be either bride or daughter-in-law. You see it first in Genesis thirty-eight eleven. Then said Judah to Tamar, his daughter-in-law, his kala, Remain a widow at thy father's house till Sheila my son be grown. For he said, Lest peradventure he die also, as his brethren did. And Tamar went and dwelt in her father's house. Translated generically as spouse in Song of Songs 4 8. 
Come with me from Lebanon, my spouse. With me from Lebanon, look from the top of Amana, from the top of Sinir and Hermon, from the lion's dens, from the mountains of the leopards. Of course, it is not ever translated as groom. It's a feminine noun, and groom has a completely different word. But here it is translated as spouse, but it is the bride. Jeremiah 7.34 Then will I cause to cease from the cities of Judah and from the streets of Jerusalem the voice of mirth and the voice of gladness, the voice of the bridegroom and the voice of the bride, for the land shall be desolate. How is the word bride related to this concept of finishing or completing? Well, when a man gets married, when he takes a bride, either he is complete or he is finished. Not my joke. We have talked elsewhere about the doubling of letters, making what is called a geminate verb. So we see that two lamids at the end. Ezekiel 27.4 Thy borders are in the midst of the seas. Thy builders have perfected thy beauty. A noun from this, michlal. Psalm 50 verse 2 Out of Zion, the perfection of beauty, God hath shined. Sometimes there are what is considered to be four-letter roots, and we just see the actual doubling of the two letters. Kal, kal, kil, kil. To sustain or to contain. Something that holds something completely, or it gives you the sustenance that you can remain complete. Genesis 45.11 and there will I nourish thee, for yet there are five years of famine, lest thou and thy household, and all that thou hast, come to poverty. In 1 Kings 8.27, But will God indeed dwell on the earth? Behold, the heaven and the heavens of heavens cannot contain thee. The completeness of God cannot fit in anywhere. How much less this house that I have builded. Also in Malachi 3.2, but who may abide the day of his coming? Who can be sustained in the midst of it? And who shall stand when he appeareth? For he is like a refiner's fire and like a fuller's soap. With an olive at the beginning, we have a verb which also means consume or to eat. Genesis 2:16, And Jehovah God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. Genesis thirty-seven thirty-three, And he knew it, and said, It is my son's coat. An evil beast hath devoured him. Joseph is without doubt rent in pieces. So not only for people and animals. Deuteronomy 32, 37, 38. And he shall say, Where are their gods, their rock in whom they trusted, which did eat the fat of their sacrifices and drank the wine of their drink offerings, let them rise up and help you and be your protection. Speaking of false gods who clearly cannot eat anything. In terms of inanimate objects, Deuteronomy 5.25 Now therefore, why should we die? For this great fire will consume us. If we hear the voice of Jehovah our God any more, then we shall die. Deuteronomy 32.42 I will make mine arrows drunk with blood, and my sword shall devour flesh, and that with the blood of the slain and of the captives from the beginning of revenges upon the enemy. By adding a yud, we find a word that is used in very many diverse meanings. It has the idea of a container, but also any kind of implement, any kind of stuff. It's a very wide range of meanings, and we'll see. Genesis 27.3 Now therefore take, I pray thee, thy weapons, thy quiver and thy bow, and go out to the field and take me some venison, just in terms of an implement. Genesis 31.37 Whereas thou hast searched all my stuff, what hast thou found of all thy household stuff? Set it here before my brethren and thy brethren, that they may judge betwixt us both. Vessels or implements. Genesis 42:25. Then Joseph commanded to fill their sacks with corn and to restore every man's money into his sack and to give them provision for the way 
and thus did he unto them. A sack, clearly we can see, it's a vessel. It can contain things. Exodus 11.2 Speak now in the ears of the people, and let every man borrow of his neighbor, and every woman of her neighbor, jewels of silver and jewels of gold. A, a plain meaning of article. When we talk about the implements in the tabernacle, we see this word, kelim, used often. Exodus 27, 3. And thou shalt make his pans to receive his ashes, his shovels and his basins, and his flesh hooks and his fire pans. All the vessels thereof thou shalt make of brass. Again, Exodus 31, 8. And the table of his furniture, and the pure candlestick with his furniture, and the altar of incense. Nehemiah 12.36 And his brethren, Shemaiah, and Nazariel, and Milalai, and Gilalai, Ma'ai, Netanel, and Judah, Hanani, with the musical instruments of David, the man of God, and Ezra, the scribe before him. If you have heard of the typical Eastern European Jewish music genre, it is called klezmer, and some people think that the origin of that word is from here, clay, instruments, zemer, music, or song. Clay, zemer, became klezmer. Jonah 1.5, then the mariners were afraid and cried every man unto his God and cast forth the wares, all the stuff that were in the ship, into the sea, to lighten it of them. But Jonah was gone down into the sides of the ship, and he lay and was fast asleep. So the feminine form of this, klia, which tends to be presented in the plural, klayot, has two distinct meanings. In Exodus 29, 13, And thou shalt take all the fat that covereth the inwards, and the call that is above the liver, and the two kidneys, and the fat that is upon them, and burn them upon the altar. Kidneys clearly are a vessel, they hold the urine, and this refers to the physical organ in the body. However, when the word appears applying to people, it has a different translation. Psalm 7, 9. Oh, let the wickedness of the wicked come to an end, but establish a just, for the righteous God trieth the hearts and reins. Now, reins are something that we have on a horse to direct the horse to pull his head and then he will turn right or left. What is this referring to? Well, it is actually referring to your kidneys. And what is it that pulls us to go this way or that way? Many times it is talking about emotions. And the kidneys were thought to be the seat of the emotions in the human being. And this is not so far afield because in fact your adrenal glands sit directly on your kidneys and your adrenal glands of course make adrenaline and they highly reflect what is going on in your life emotionally so they might cause you to go this way or that way. If we add an olive to the end we have this verb kala which means to restrain or jail. It can also be a noun jail. Uh, let's see in Genesis 8 2 the fountains also of the deep and the windows of heaven were stopped and the rain from heaven was restrained. It was held in place as if it was in a vessel of some sort. Genesis 23, 6. Hear us, my Lord. Thou art a mighty prince among us. In the choice of our sepulchres, bury thy dead. None of us shall withhold, none of us shall restrain from thee his sepulchre, but thou, thou mayest bury thy dead. Numbers eleven twenty eight. And Joshua the son of Nun, the servant of Moses, one of the young men, answered and said, My Lord Moses, forbid them, restrain them, don't let them do what they're doing. First Kings twenty two twenty seven. And say, Thus saith the king, Put this fellow in the prison where he is restrained, and feed him with bread of affliction and the water of affliction until I come in peace. Another Place of restraint would, of course, be the sheepfold. Psalm 78, 70. 
he chose David, also his servant, and took him from the sheepfolds. In Habakkuk 3.17, Although the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall fruit be in the vines. The labor of the olive shall fail, and the fields shall yield no meat. The flock shall be cut off from the fold, and there shall be no herd in the stalls. Now here is something that I find quite interesting, just in terms of the graphology, the writing of this word, techelet. Techelet means blue. We see it for the blue used in the tabernacle. Exodus 25, 4, and blue and purple and scarlet and fine linen and goat's hair. And also for the blue of the tzitzit, Numbers 15, 38. Speak unto the children of Israel and bid them that they make them fringes on the borders of their garments throughout their generations, and that they put upon the fringe of the borders a ribbon of blue. And this is to remind the wearer of the commandments. Now in the word techele, we see a taf at the beginning and a taf at the end, and the kol, the all, is in the middle. So here is an example of the taf at the beginning from Genesis 2.17, uh, I will read, Umeetz hada'atov and from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, lo tochal mimenu, you will not eat from it. So the tav at the beginning is, you will. Ki beyom achalcha mimenu, and in the day of your eating from it, mot tamut, here the tav at the beginning of the mut, tamut is you will die. So literally it says a death you will die, but it's usually translated as you will surely die. So in other places we have done some lessons on this. But the tav at the beginning is for the future tense, you will do something. In the next example, Genesis 3.17, we see the tav at the end. Adam Amar ki shamata lakol ishtecha. And to Adam he said, Because you listened, past tense, to the voice of your wife. And so the tab at the end of the word, as a verb, means you did something in the past tense. So both those tabs you will do and you did surround this word call, which means all. John 14, 20. At that day ye shall know that I am in my Father, and ye are in me, and I in you. If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. Yeshua, the all in all, the coal, dwells in you between the two tabs. Colossians 1, 27. To whom God will make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Messiah in you, the hope of glory. The all in all is in you between the tabs. I hope that this is edifying to you. Until next time, Tasimita Inayim Al Keep your eyes on the sky, your redemption draweth nigh. Shalom.